This is the first one, okay? Okay, thanks. If Jen, if she doesn't flip the page over for you, mm -hmm. I have to do it like this, yeah. you just come over and you flip the page. Okay. Okay, thanks. hopefully she will flip the page. Thanks. You're welcome. No, this is our so then we go show the other thing. Can you see the Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. Thank you for the enthusiasm. My name is Matt, and I will be the commentator. For Christians, Easter is the greatest feast of all. This is the, the day Jesus conquered death for us. And if Jesus is victorious over death and evil, he can also help us with our own pain, our own losses, and our own sufferings. And Jesus suffered and died, not for his own self-glorification, but he did it because he cares for us. We are precious to him. With gratitude, let us gather this day to pray. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Daniel Nascimento. Please stand. Our opening song is number 176, Jesus Christ is Risen.
We gather in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today you'll hear a lot of alleluias, and that's because during the whole season of Lent, so from Ash Wednesday onwards, we held back using that word. That word means praise the Lord, but we were holding it back because we were in the season of Lent. And now that we are finally here at Easter, we can shout out, Alleluia! Let me hear you. Alleluia! Alleluia! We're praising the Lord because of what the Lord has done for us. He conquered death. He reassures us that we are always precious to him, that he's always close to us. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us begin acknowledging our faults, our failures, and asking the good Lord then to help us to be our better selves. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. We praise our God.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judged of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appeared, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. to the Paschal victim offer your thankful praises a lamb a sheep redeems Christ who only is sinless reconciles sinners to The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. 
He bent down, saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, if someone were to ask you, do you believe in Easter? How would you respond? Do you believe in Easter? And if they press you, what do you believe about Easter? How might you respond? Russell Kelfer told a true story about Edith Burns. Edith is a kind, and a wonderful Christian woman who lived in San Antonio, Texas. She had a habit of introducing herself this way to people. Hello, my name is Edith Burns. Do you believe in Easter? No subtlety, right? Goes right in. Then she would explain the meaning of Easter and many times people are happy to hear her explanation. And they might even come to put their faith and trust in Jesus. One day she was at her doctor's office and he said to, she said to him, Dr. Will, why are you so sad? Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? With a heavy heart, the doctor said, your lab report came back and it says you have cancer and you're not going to live very long. Edith responded, shame on you. Why are you so sad? You have just told me that I'm going to see my precious Lord Jesus, my husband and my friends. You have just told me that I'm going to celebrate Easter forever, and you are having difficulty giving me my ticket? The doctor thought to himself, wow, what an amazing woman of faith. When Edith was admitted to the hospital, she continued to introduce herself to fellow patients and the hospital staff sharing with them about Easter. Everyone on Edith's hospital floor were touched by her kindness and faith, and they started calling her Edith Easter. Well, except the hit nurse, Phyllis Cross. Phyllis made it plain that she wanted nothing to do with Edith, because as she saw it, she was a religious nut. Phyllis had been an army nurse. She's seen it, heard it all. She's been married three times. She was hard, cold, and did everything by the book. One day, two nurses called in sick. So short staff, Phyllis had to go care for Edith. When Phyllis walked in, Edith had this big smile and said to her, Phyllis, God loves you, and I love you, and I've been praying for you. Phyllis responded, well, you can quit praying for me. It won't work. I'm not interested. And Edith responded, well, I will pray for you, and I ask God not to let me go home to heaven until you come into the family of God. 
Phyllis answered back, then you will never die because that will never happen. Tried as she might to stay away from Edith, but something kept pulling Phyllis to go to that room like magnet to iron, right? So one day Phyllis entered Edith's room again and sat down on her bed. Edith said, I'm so glad you've come because God told me that today is your special day. Phyllis said, you've asked everybody here the question, do you believe in Easter? But you never asked me. Edith answered, many times I wanted to, but God told me to wait until you asked. And since she asked, then Edith pulled out her Bible and told her the Easter story, that Christ is victorious and conquered death. And if Jesus can transform death to life, he can then also transform our pain, our brokenness, our suffering into something beautiful and life-giving. So Edith asked Phyllis, do you believe in Easter? She replied, I want to believe with all my heart and I do want Jesus in my life. Edith prayed with Phyllis, and she received Jesus into her heart that day. So for the first time, Phyllis didn't just walk out of a hospital room. She was carried on the wings of angels. So that's the Easter story, the most important part. Jesus conquered death. He is victorious. And if Jesus can transform death to life, then any problems that we have, God can also bring new life into. And the second most important part of the Easter story is that, well, Jesus didn't do all of that for himself. He didn't go through the agony of the cross. He didn't go down into the depths of hell to rescue those who were there. He didn't do that for himself, but he did it for us. Because we are precious to him. We matter to him. He cares about us. And if we surrender our situation over to him, he can bring peace and joy and faith and hope into our lives. A woman once asked a co-worker, how come she always looks so peaceful? Because even, you know, in the office when things kind of go crazy, she always kept this very calm demeanor. And the co-worker responded that when things go wrong or bad in her life, she remembers Good Friday. And how when Jesus surrendered his life, his situation over to God, God did not disappoint them, but raised them from the dead three days later. So she found from her experience, she said, three days after she prays and lets go, things usually get better. I like to close by sharing. Um, this is a video that I saw of an African-American pastor preaching. And you know how they preach, they're very dynamic. So I'm gonna ask your help with this. Um, Cause you know, the way they preach, they preach with such fiery emotion. They, they, they express their passion. And then the congregation responds back. And so then they feed each other. And so then this church gets into a very uh, climatic uh, experience. So this pastor was preaching. It's Good Friday. They've taken my Lord. But it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. Amen? It's Good Friday, 
and they nail my Lord to the tree. But it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. Amen? Amen. It's Good Friday. The body of Jesus is taken down from the cross. He lays on the laps of Mary. She cries unconsolably. She's in pain. She's horrified. But it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. Amen? Amen. So no matter what pains or sorrows we carry, no matter how impossible the situation may seem, surrender it. Surrender as Jesus surrendered it on the cross to his heavenly Father. And Sunday will come for us. It may have been Friday, but Easter Sunday is here. Amen? Amen. I'll close with this. I love it. Pope John Paul II said, Do not abandon yourself to despair. We are an Easter people. Do not Surrender yourself to despair. We are an Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God Easter is here. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand. And each year, we have the opportunity to renew our faith. So many of us, we were baptized as babies, and we were baptized into the faith of our parents. And in confirmation, we assume that responsibility. We affirm that faith. But then throughout our lives, through the ups and downs, We may question God. We may question the goodness of God. But Good Friday teaches us that God loves us and is willing to suffer and die for us. So now we have the opportunity to renew our baptismal faith. And as your lungs have just been exercised, I'm going to also invite you to renounce sin and to profess your faith boldly with I do. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you reject Satan, the author and prince of sin? There was a man. When the priest asked that question, the man was silent. And the priest asked the man, how come you didn't respond? The man answered, Father, I'm not sure which way I'm going yet. I don't want to make any enemies. Too late. Do you believe in God? the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints? And 
and we're proud to profess it with you in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I'm going to invite Jacob together. We're going to come down with holy water. And just as we were baptized with water on our, when we were babies, we're going to sprinkle you with holy water to remind us of that gift that we have received. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen? Amen. Let's continue now presenting our petitions to the Lord. He's so happy coming up, praying to the Lord. So rejoicing in Christ's triumph over death, let us voice aloud these prayers and petitions. For the church that she serves as the beacon of light, hope, love, 
and new life in the world plagued by disorder and death. We pray to the Lord. For the leaders of nations, that God used them to establish his kingdom in wisdom and justice and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Ukraine, that their wounds be healed and their freedom defended, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people received into the church today, that they grow in their resolve to share the good news of Christ with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Stephen Miley, Courtman Andrew Thomas, Leticia Casilla, Stefan LeLuc, Nancy Brennan, Manuel Penalosa, Ricky Manalo, and all those who care for them, that they feel the healing touch of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have recently died, especially Lucita Esperas, Lupe Lopez, as well as those who have lost their lives to senseless violence, that they be granted into the glory of divine and eternal love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for the people of the parish and all here present, for the repose of the soul of Ruby Chang, and for the repose of the soul of Sun Hung Ma, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we offer these prayers to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Thank you. Please be seated. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 617, Come to the Water.
Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalting your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. for us, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember those who have died, Ruby Chang, Sung Hung Ma, Lupi Lopez, and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Jesus Christ, through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God as our Father, and so with confidence we pray. Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion song is number 326, I am the bread of life.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mystery, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. We have a few announcements. You may be seated if you like. Our second collection this Sunday will be for the property and liability insurance. Our cost per year is over $133,000. Your support is greatly appreciated. Ushers, you may now take up the collection. The Boy Scouts are preparing a pancake breakfast for us this morning. You are all invited to join us downstairs in Moriarty Hall. It is only $8 for adults, but children are free. Viewers at home, come on over. There will also be an Easter egg hunt sometime after breakfast, as well as arts and crafts down the hall. All are welcome to celebrate Easter with us. Thanks, Matt. So I tried it earlier, the pancake breakfast. If you smell, it can be, I don't know if you can smell with your mask on, but it was smelling delicious downstairs. So we invite you to join us. And I also want to thank our musicians. You know, throughout the, this Holy Week, they've done really an ex outstanding job for, and yes. I don't know you can't see it from your side, but there's two guitars. There's a uh, little Tomasi's with the drums. So if you hear the, uh, the acoustics. <laughs> as well as to our altar servers, our ushers, lectors, Eucharistic ministers, and in particular, Sister and her volunteers were here all of yesterday just cleaning up and transforming the space into a beautiful um, celebration of Easter. So thank you, sister, and all your volunteers. Good. Any, a, anyone has a celebrating a birthday in April? Anyone who has an April birthday? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, let's sing a happy birthday. It was Father Peter's birthday yesterday. I think all the birthday people get free pancakes, right? Is that what? <laughs> Please stand. And so may the Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen? And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen? Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help to the feast in eternal joy in heaven. Amen? And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. The Mass is in it, go in peace, alleluia, alleluia.
Happy Easter, everyone. Our closing song is number 169, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thank you.